Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. This is my Riley. He likes to be in the videos and um, he is like my constant companion. So he has also been the one getting me out of my sewing room, out on walks and um, getting the exercise that I need. He's watching a butterfly. We have so many butterflies in our garden. We have a beautiful plant called milkweed and it spreads, um, which is why it's called a weed, but the monarch butterflies flock here and we have butterflies all over the place all the time. I had put on Instagram last week, I think it was, a brand new butterfly that had just come out of the chrysalis and it was pumping its wings, getting all the blood going in it so that it could take its first flight. And as I turned my head, I saw it fly over my head off into the wild world, hopefully right into the front yard. And it had been in the backyard. So um, that's, that's what we get to watch, Riley and I, from our window. And I wanted to share a few things this time because I have done... Um, no cross stitching since my last floss tube. So why am I doing a floss tube? To share with you tips and tricks and organization and some things that I didn't have time to share before, um, I wanted to share with you. So part of the reason I have not been cross stitching is because I've been organizing my sewing room and I'm coming into the finish of making my room as organized as I can and as sweet of a place to me as I can. And in doing that, it my husband comes in here all the time because I'm in here. He comes in here and visits with me and my kids and my friends will come in here and visit with me. And then obviously you visit with me in here as well. So just some things that I'm learning. One of the things is the difference. I had shared in my last floss tube about Jenny stitching simply and ideas that I was gathering from her, and I was thinking it was more minimalist. And then I watched a video by someone that I follow, The Cottage Fairy, and she was sharing about the difference between simplicity and minimalism. And so really, it's the simplicity that I'm looking for, because obviously with the collection of stuff that I have in the room, that's making it unorganized. Um, I'm not minimalizing things. I do want to simplify things. So those are the things that I wanted to share, even to the point that my dog is very small and we have bought very few toys for him. Really, we've had him six years and really in the six years that we have had him, because he is so tiny, actually the regular tennis balls do not work from him for him. So we have to buy little tiny small ones so you can actually get his mouth around him. But I have friends giving me... Um, and my sister um, no longer has animals right now, but she had a lot of cat toys. <laughs> Her cat was bigger than my Riley. Um, she had a Norwegian forest cat, I believe Hans was. And um, so she just found some more toys. And um, this is Riley's, one of Riley's favorite toys. He has a little basket of toys. And um, it's, it is neat to have things that I love to spend money on my hobbies. But there's a lot of things that I don't want to spend my money on. And so I'm looking at different ways because I've I've come into 2021 realizing I spent way too much money on my brand new cross-stitch hobby in 2020. And I I've set limits for myself in 2021 and I will I will change them as I go. So money that I see as kind of discretionary money, um, I'm I'm minimum or simplifying those things or minimalizing those things so that I have that money without guilt to spend on my hobby. So um, there we go. Animal toys from somebody else. That is my great way. And um, then simplifying as well too. I, 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 I never have liked going to a gym. I know a lot of people are, um, there's a lot more people out walking and doing things because the gyms have been closed and they will they will enjoy going back to them. I don't like that. I I don't like uh, I like the freedom of being by myself. I like it quiet. And so he has been helping me get out and go for walks. 
And um, those are the kind of things that I enjoy, saving money in different places. Now, the other thing, I love watching Lori Mischievous Stitches, and I have seen her hairstyle change, and she has gone from more of a straight look to more kinky curly, and I love it. And I I wanted, I took, a, as I was walking last night, um, I, I rounded the corner and my neighbor who had let her hair go gray, um, let's see, it was at the beginning of 2020, we had been talking and I just thought, I'm just going to do it. She's my age. I loved her hair. My cousin had gone gray the year before and, or natural, um, and she looks very much like me. So I could imagine what I would look like with my natural hair color and so I took that jump and she but she was really the inspiration because I was seeing her more often so as I rounded the corner I saw her and I said hey your gray is beautiful and um then I just shared with her how how mine you know mine is getting there mine is uh maybe a third of the way um or actually when I get my hair trimmed it will be half of the way and so we were just talking. She's, yeah, I don't know what to do with it now. So this morning as I was doing my hair, I wash my hair every other day. And as I was going to blow dry it, instead of using my round metal brush to usually I try to get it to have some, I don't know, a little curl or a little turn at the bottom. I thought, well, what if I just squash it? So I just kind of squashed it. I didn't, I combed it, but I didn't even brush it. Um, so I'm just trying something different. I will need to get my hair cut soon because in the summertime, I usually, I don't like it on me. I, it's sweaty, it's hot, and I'm usually out gardening or sewing. And so it gets in my face. So I usually twist it and pop it up. And, uh, you know, if I can have it shorter and leave it down, that's what I will like. So I will get it cut soon. But again, that's my discretionary money. And instead of spending the money there, even though it's a friend of mine, um, who is my hairstylist, um, I'd rather spend that money right now on, on my fabrics and my stitching. So what have I been up to? I, I am going to do a quilting video either sometime today or tomorrow. Oh my word. I left my phone in the other room. Um, I work on call, so, um, that's going to be interesting, but I don't want to stop this. Um, so what have I been up to? I have been up to quilting. I got back into quilting because I had been only cross stitching um, for like six or seven months. And then now I'm, I'm doing cross stitching generally, usually, generally, usually cross stitching and quilting. And then I want to get back into redoing some of my bracelets because I've lost weight since I made these and they're, they're, they were way too big. So I'm, I'm having to rework with them. So I just thought I just need to take a picture of them, take them apart and redo them in a size that fits. So I have different hobbies and then I got out and did, um, I did some gardening yesterday and it was wonderful. My husband left for work and he said, oh, are you doing, are you trying to get control of, of a part of the garden? And I said, I'm just kind of doing damage control, but it lasts for about 10 minutes because the weeds grow. So I've been doing different things, but this is just a block and I will share much more about this on my quilting video that I will do. So that's what I've been up to. I got to figure out where to throw things. Um, because last video that I did, I almost popped a box. I forgot Riley was on the couch behind me right now. He's on the floor. Um, then I had blocks that I had done the pint. That was the pineapple block, a 12 inch. Then these were from Lori Holt, the, um, it's so Emma. I actually got these put together and I shared on Instagram as I was doing this, I saw Christy cross hatch quilts. Um, she actually did a quilting video and she was sharing a new Lori Holt um, project that she's going to do and it has to do with a lot of those different blocks and I was watching that while I was putting that together so I popped that on my Instagram. But interesting thing, this is just something, uh, uh, just, this is going to be kind of about tips. So I found as I was as I was peeling the papers off, I found one seam totally came undone. So this is what I do. I just have scraps of fabric on my safety pins to let me know, okay, I got to fix that before I went to sandwich it so I could hand quilt it and I've got to fix that first. Um, so that's what I've been up to. Where did I just throw this? There we go. Then the cross stitching project that I really want to focus on right now is one that Celeste from Celeste Creates, Jen from The Naughty Oak um, on Instagram and I are doing um, 
a stitch along and I, I wrote down and I remember the hashtag now, but it's hashtag um, acorn to oak sal with the number two. So A-C-O-R-N, the number two, O-A-K-S-A-L. Obviously, I have not done that in the last two weeks since I did a floss tube, but I have been playing around doing different things. So I've been making, I made some project bags and it was funny because I wanted I wanted to do, now that I'm enjoying the thread drops, I thought, oh, I've got this. I just put a jump ring on it and um, I have it on there. But as I got this out today, I realized that's clunky and it's going to bother me. So I am going to make a project bag and this will be hanging from the outside of the project bag because it's going to be a larger one. And then I have charms that are small acorns. So I will make something next time. But that was, these are the colors. These these are like my favorite colors. Um I love fall colors and I love forest colors and these are my my colors that I enjoy. And I knew I hadn't stitched in the last two weeks because this was still ironed. I just folded it and put it away. But this is how far I have gotten and um, this is the called for linen, the called for colors and I'm doing one over two. So this is my Mighty Oak and it it has been languishing. That pattern that pattern is from Winds of Autumn, which I think everybody has purchased. Um, and there's so many. I have I have a overstuffed project bag because I want to make so many things in here, but this is what it's going to look at. So I generally start in the bottom left and I, I work my way up. So that's that's where I'm working. I will change one or two of the colors, but mostly I will be doing the called for. The problem that I'm seeing is I have not made some of the project bags and this is way overstuffed with, cause I've got three or four projects that I want to make and it's overstuffed and I'm damaging the book as I'm getting it in. So I've been working on project bags and I even have some fabric, that fabric saved to do a big, bigger project bag. And I've got so many things laid out in front of me. I had to actually move the camera this time because I, I wanted to share with you because I wanted to get a floss tube done before it was too long because otherwise I lose my, lose my groove and I lose the courage to push record. So I thought I'm just going to do it and share things with you. So actually I have so much stuff piled up. I have to be very careful, but I have really been enjoying um, sitting in my room and looking at my collections of things that I have, whether it's quilts that are done, quilts that are in the process, um, supplies that I have, books, pattern books, threads. Um, I'm just looking around my room. I have jars of my mom's antique buttons and just things all around. And I have been enjoying sitting on my bar stool and using my stool. And I'm going to show you all these things because it is in a sense of um, the tiny house living. I really love tiny house living ideas. Um, I like I like the size of house that I have right now, but I like those ideas because I have so much stuff and I need to organize it. And the tiny house living concept is making something that you have functional for other purposes. So the stool that I have made is also a storage unit. And I'm even going to show you the boxes that I found that fit perfect in there and they're fitting perfect for a lot of the things. So I sit on my bar stool, which was in the garage from when my son had, my husband had made a bar, a, a narrow bar in front of, we have these beautiful windows that look out to the front of our house. And, and that's where the garden is. And so my son had a bar stool cause we homeschooled. He had a bar stool and my husband had made a bar countertop so he could do his schoolwork there. And then when he moved out, we just threw it in the garage and I thought, Oh, that, that's perfect. So it, it works when I'm working at my quilt table. I can sit here and look out the window and now I have it over there and that's my husband and my son's favorite place to to be when they come and visit me. So I like to sit on my bar stool in the morning now with my coffee and I look out at the garden and I plan. So right now I've been planning. So I'm planning on organizing and I'm planning on projects to make. So that's what I have been enjoying doing. And part of part of where I have not been stitching so much is because I realized I had been trying to cram too many things in. I, I had all these cross-stitch patterns and I thought, I've got to do them, do them, do them, because I loved it. 
and I wanted to saturate myself in that. And then I realized between that and work and other responsibilities and opportunities that I had, I realized that um, that that was I needed a break from so much doing. So now I've kind of stepped back a little bit and just really enjoying what I have and planning and kidding things up and gathering ideas for the future. So there was something, I have this quilt, this quilt I will share on, um, on my quilting video that I will do later on, but I knew that I had big scrap pieces from it somewhere. But when I had kind of cleaned up my quilting room a couple years ago, I put a bunch of things in plastic boxes because I love plastic boxes and I put them in the garage. The benefit of that is if I forget to label it, I can see what's in there. So I went out, actually I was gonna wash my car, which I had even put that off because I was only wanting to stitch. So I went in the garage, it was a Saturday, and I went in the garage to get the car washing stuff. And then I saw this plastic box and it had those scraps in it. And so I pulled that out and I'm playing with it and I'm going to my room. And um, my husband, because he knew I was gonna wash my car, my husband said, hey, what are you doing? And I said, I just started laughing. I said, I'm, I'm letting the squirrel out. And he's like, because we have a squirrel in the backyard too. He's like, what? And I said, I, he knows me. I said, I've, I've got so many ideas that I've always got going in my head. And generally I have to put the squirrel in the cage so I can do things. And, um, you know, and then boom, 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 boom. My day is gone and the squirrel never got to get out. So that Saturday... I just did whatever I wanted to. Eventually I got the car washed. But I also pulled that box out and I was looking through all the things that I had and then getting rid of stuff that I didn't want to do and then putting those things together that I did want to do. So I let the squirrel out, but this is what happened. I got a project bag made and I'm really wanting to learn new skills. I boxed the bottom. And this, this, is, this funny seam is just a result of using scraps from something else, but it's on the bottom and that's the only time anyone's gonna see it. But I have a playlist on my channel and there's one that will be valuable. Hopefully, it's valuable to myself because that's a way that I can save videos that I wanna refer back to. But last night when I got home from work, I just thought, I'm going to make this project bag and I'm going to learn how to do a boxed bottom. And I've had people comment on words on how to do that boxed bottom. And I thought, I think I understand it. And that's how I want to do it, which is where you cut out the corner. But I am a visual learner. And so I just searched. I thought, surely there's going to be a video on boxing bottoms. And yes, there was one. And I just added that to my playlist, which is projects or videos by other project bags, totes, yada, yada. Um, and I just added that one on there and that's how I did it. Um, and it worked very well. And I realized this was to be, this was like two and a quarter inches and that's, that's a good size. But the next one I'm going to do is just a little bit smaller. So very clear. Now, um, if you will notice, cause this, this video is going to be all about details. I have learned through a book and I will share, I've shared about that book all the time. It's called Stitched by Anila Hooley but now it's under things. I am enjoying doing the zipper flange and I'm learning how to do it pretty good. I can, there's still some things that there, it's not perfectly straight, but I'm learning the basting is important. Then I'm learning how to do, are you going to be able to see that? How to do a zipper tab. I don't have my glasses on and it's all the same fabric. So I'm learning how to do zipper tabs and, um, I'm learning the thickness that I like doing. So those were the things, because I don't have the cross stitching to share, these are the things that I'm gonna share with you. So it is more just chatty and it is more just sharing tips and tricks. So these were fabrics. So when I was first into quilting, I, I um, gathered a lot of Nancy Halverson fabrics because they were bright and cheerful and I enjoyed them. And and I bought quite a bit of them, but I must have found them on sale because these these were from like 06, 07. I have um, like a yard and a half extra of this and a blue and a pink and a yellow. 
So there must have been a sale. That was at a time I loved Ginger's Quilt Shop in Upland, which is no longer there. There must have been a good sale because there's, there's, I know myself at that time, I would not have paid regular price to have so much of this, but it is very beautiful. But these, the, I'm doing more, these kind of quilts, the darker, but these are beautiful for project bags. So I even did the lining because I was, I am not buying anything. I'm really trying not to buy any fabric for project bags because I don't need fabric. So, um, I did that as the lining and the flange and everything. But as I did it last night, I had it up and I just thought, oh, I was so pleased with it because it, I'm really enjoying my scraps and scrap organization because if I love working with scraps so much, I want to be able to find them. So that's what I did. So that was a fun thing. Then I'm also learning that I like trays. Now the bummer is, um, and I have my trays, I'll show you in a minute. I went to Hobby Lobby to rebuy or to buy more of these certain brown primitive looking trays because I was trying not to buy too many things at the time. So I only bought two and then I realized, wow, they nest and I've got projects. So those would be great. And if they were still on sale, well, they were all gone. They have brights like that, but I don't do brights. So, um, that's okay. That just means I need to keep things more. Um, I can stack them higher. I can do whatever I want, but I, right now these have been on the floor and that's not okay with me. So I know that Elizabeth Ann can stitch has a project bag tutorial with the type that has, um, it has like this similar, not vinyl, but it has an upper piece. You zip it open and there's a bottom piece rather than the zipper being along the top. So I thought I'm ready to try one of those. And so I was watching her video and this is what I do. This is my coffee in the morning. I'm writing down the directions that she has given, but then I'm going to change. I change everything. I'm going to change that according to the needs that I have. I really like having things the same size. So my large project bags, I would like them all the same size. My cross stitch project bags, I would like those all the same size just because that's the way I, I like to look at them like that. So I was just thinking, okay, how would I change that according to what I might want? So these are the things that are on the floor, but these are the scraps that I was working at with. So again, I've got a lot of this blue and these, so I'm going through and I have a zipper collection. Um, so I'm trying, I'm trying to make it work with what I have because I bought a set and then these are more of the scraps that I have, but you can see these are just scraps and I'm going to show you why I have so many scraps in a moment, but that's something, but I've got to piece those pieces together. Would it be a lot easier just to use a regular piece of fabric or to start something from the beginning? Of course it would, but I don't do things that are necessarily easy. Then on the floor, I have one more that have the yellow pieces, but here is why I have so many pieces because this is actually the back of my quilt. This is the backing. It is a quilt. The pattern was one that my sister um, was at either her quilt guild or quilt retreat and they taught everybody how to make this quilt. And it was funny because as I was figuring out what I wanted to share with you, I got this one out. That's the same quilt, just done in different sizes. But um, I, I tried searching it and I don't see the designer and I don't wanna share the dimensions with you because I don't have the designer. It was just something my sister told me about. I saw hers and I made. So there are many quilt patterns that are out like this. And the ones off the top of my head would be Turning 20, um, then Yellow Brick Road by Terry Atkinson. But you could also just search on Pinterest. Um, and then there's Magic Nine Patch. These, if you go on Pinterest, you will be able to find many, many free quilt um, directions like this. Um, so I know there's tons out there, but you can see as I did the backing, I just made, I just made a quilt top 
um, bigger than I thought it would be because you need to have the backing of a quilt larger. So along the edge, it didn't end perfectly. And then I didn't lay it out perfectly either. So it was kind of uneven. But this was one of my very first quilts that I did. And this was all fabric that I had purchased, which, which was new for me. Usually I was using stuff that was given to me by my mom and my sister. So this is the backing of the quilt. And I even used, I found some flowers. So if you remember um, the, the log cabin on my last quilting video, um, for those of you that have may have watched it, this was just leftovers. And here I was forgetting that this is supposed to be floss tube and not my quilting. So... Um, it's just one of those mornings, um, but this is the front of the quilt. So I will share more about that when I actually do the quilting video. So there we go. Um, this is, this is just going to be one of those videos, stuff all over the place. Um, my head all over the place. It's the squirrel is out, I guess. Now I wanted to share with you, I get a lot of my zippers on Zip It Zippers from Etsy. I purchased their collection. They gave you they didn't give you the one of the sets was you could purchase a set of any size zippers with one of every single color they had the benefit was it came like this so you could see so that way when you went to rebuy it you would know exactly the one that you wanted I realize that's not the best set for me because most of them are brights and I don't do brights so these are many of them and um if I end up not using these, I will do them in some sort of a giveaway. But I also realize I have a lot of crazy fabrics that might not be perfect for me, but I could use up my fabric stash and either um, give them away, sell them, or gift them. So I'm hanging on to these for right now um, because I'm into organization, and that's what this is going to be more about. Um, they have these, I think I got these at Home Depot, um, these zipper tie things that they have the little slot and then you can tighten it. They're great for cords, but this is also great because I can do it like this and I can pull them out. It had arrived with the ribbon and it kept coming undone. So this is part of my organization. But when I was first doing the zippers, I purchased 14 inch zippers because it, this was the set. Um, but now I realize I don't like working around the zipper tabs. So last time I purchased them, I purchased 16 inch zippers, um, which will be great because last night, as I made that project bag, I that was the color that matched, um, but it was a 14 inch zipper, which I realized it would have been a lot easier if it was a 16 inch zipper. Things are falling because I have so many things here to share with you and you're getting wiggled. Um, this is the book that I'm learning so much from, Stitched Sewing Organizers by Anila Hui. So in here she has that, the project bag that I had shared with you is just the big zip pouch. I'm learning a lot. I'm seeing this as a reference book and it's very much worth my while to purchase. And I'm learning in there because I've never made project bags before and I haven't really used a stabilizer. Um, a friend of mine had given me a whole roll of fusible fleece and I've been using that for my project bags. I have no idea what the number is because she gave it to me. It was not labeled. So now it's almost gone, but that's what I use for the stiffness in these project bags that I make between the vinyl and this, that's what works. So this is the 16 gauge vinyl and I buy it on the roll um, and I get it from my local Joann's. And I am almost out of it because I also made another project bag. But before I forget, let me share with you. I, I am finding that when I'm doing my needle books and project bags, I'm also using this, which is, hmm, I think it's the, I'll put it in the notes, or I'll just look at it here because I'll probably forget the notes if I can read it. Um, it's S, SF101 Pellon. It's called Shape Flex. So it's like a woven and it's um, iron on, but I use this only now when I'm doing my needle books. I do not use the fleece, but when I make my big project pouches, I put this on first as a stabilizer to hold it together. Then I also add on the fleece and it does take a while to get that ironed on and I have to flip it to be able to get that ironed on. But I like that for my big pouches. It gives it more of a stability. So I think that's the fun thing is trying something, seeing what someone else does and then personalizing it to yourself based on what you like. 
Now, um, I, I've been gifted a lot of things or I pick things up. I have friends at my guild who know I like things and one of them was clearing out and she gave me something in this project tote and, um, and it was vinyl and it has this handle, which is really handy to have. Now I have all, so this is everything for, for my, um, Kathy Schmidt pro Schmitz. I have the hardest time saying her name projects. Um, and I really like this. So I've been thinking, how can I like being able to see through? That's why I like the vinyl pouches because I can see through instead of the tags, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But um, I've been thinking, how can I make this? It does not have a seam at the bottom. So I thought, oh, I can surely do that. So I figured out what I could do and I even have stuff um, that I could do this, which which I, I will do um, soon. But what I, I was just playing and I made this. So this is what I made the other night. And of course this, this is from mom. This was, she loved florals and she loved purple. And I even remember a project that we made together. We did a pillowcase. That was when she was losing her ability to do quilts. We made pillowcases and, and we figured out how to make a pillowcase. She chose the colors from her stash and it was so fun. We worked together. We made a pillowcase. Well, this was the width of the piece that was left. So I thought, well, that'll be perfect. Um, this one was interesting. Once I figure out how to do them the way that I can and how I like them, I'll share about this. But this was an experiment. And it did have to have a seam at the bottom because of how I put the zipper on. And I realized I can make, I don't need to do such tiny stitches. So, because it's kind of perforated it. Um, but anyway, I like the ability to see through into that. But it, it, it just has the inside of the fabric there. There is no lining on the inside, but it's large and I can get a lot of stuff in there. So see, these can fit inside of there. So as I'm figuring out how to, um, if I wanna go somewhere and put a lot of my project bags in something that I also made, this would be a great size. But the one challenge is that it, I made it a little bit too wide. And let's see, let's get some of this stuff off of there. Um, I made it a little bit too wide because it doesn't fit in the basket that I want it to go in. So these are all the stacks of things. And this is why I need to share with you what I'm doing as I get rid of stuff. Um, but this didn't fit as perfectly in my basket. So I need to make it, I need to make other ones a half inch narrower. But as I'm looking at simplifying and reducing how much money I'm spending because I'm buying things for cross stitch and quilting, I'm looking around my house to see what I can glean to use in my sewing room to have it perfectly organized. That's my thing now, to have a perfectly organized sewing room. One of the things that I've had, usually my iPad, usually you're sitting on top of this and my, um, my stand but this is a box. I've had these probably 20 years. Um, these are just the paper kind of boxes that you can buy everywhere. This is where my zippers are. So these are all my zip it zippers. They're in here, but this also works for many other things. Um, but I also have three sizes. This is the smallest and it tucks over against my wall and it fits perfectly there. So I've had it all different places, but then I realized that and I thought, oh, perfect. So um, let's get that out of the way. But I really wanted to challenge you guys in, and you can see I had this up where I have my antique baskets. Now this side got sun damaged because this is the color that it's supposed to be. So that happens sometimes. But I wanted to challenge people to use what they have in a different way to accomplish your purpose. So in that, let's clear some stuff off. I wanted, instead of a Kleenex box that I generally have right there, instead of just a naked Kleenex box, I was gonna buy something to hide that box. And then I realized as I'm cleaning out my office, this was something I had in my office and I had purchased it for the cabin as a utility tool to have next to your stove, your utility stool. Well, the cabin's under construction 
and it could be for a long time and so we don't have a regular kitchen so it came home and it's just been sitting I thought oh so I opened up that box of Kleenex popped it in here and now that's my beautiful Kleenex thing <laughs> so that's what's usually sitting in there but it's that whole concept that I have now of repurposing things or things that are special to me how can I use those in an organized way in so much as this this is a special jar that um, my dad found in our backyard when we were kids when he was digging out a pond my sister gave it to me and now that is my my little trash can on my quilt table so I see it all the time it's small so I have to empty it out all the time but I also wanted a bigger one next to my um, sewing machine but I thought I'm not gonna buy one what do I have well I had this ice bucket um, that cracked the bottom cracked it's got stuff stuck on there so it couldn't be used for ice anymore it's a perfect um, it's perfect for my room next to my sewing machine so I can put my threads there then so these are these are just the the tips that I am finding so eventually I'll figure out how to do a sewing room video, but it would be hours unless I shared these with you little bits and pieces. I went on um, on a quilt trip um, beginning of 2020, and I also was going to go to my dad's and quilt with my friend Judith, so I needed all my tools organized. Well, I had this in my bathroom. This was like a makeup thing, a travel makeup thing, but it is perfect for, um, it's too loud. It is perfect for all my sewing tools that I use all the time. So um, this is here on my quilting table corralled and I only have two, I even cleaned it out to organ. I have two rotary cutters, one that I use for plastic and paper, one that I use and I just put a brand new blade on. I loved it. Um, so all my tools all in one area and that is working out very well for me because that's my thing on the playlist, I think the first playlist for sewing room organization is I found um, Just Get It Done Quilts, Karen Brown, um, and I'm watching all her organization things. So those are what I'm going to share, what I am gathering and using. So her concept, that's where I got the tray idea from because she had a tray. Her concept was organizing tools in a very logical way and... Um, simplifying where things are because she said if you have a place for everything chances are it's going to get put away and then you will have a space to work with I had always had piles of stuff and then I would have to like heave it on the floor or throw it in a box or just work in this cramped space and I thought I'm not doing that anymore I want my space to be as perfect as I can make it so things that I use a lot, I'm putting in sweet little places. So I use these to label my, my quilt books. I use these to take notes, smaller sticky notes. I even washi tape. And I have a really, because I, I write notes in my books, and sometimes they have that kind of a finish. And if I do it in pencil, it wasn't erasing, it was smearing. So I even found a good eraser. So I have a beautiful little repurposed um, three drawer set that had been in the front room for years and years and as I redecorated I pulled that in here I have treasured things on top of it and each drawer has things that I need so um, so that was one of my things and then I picked this up at Hobby Lobby I was going to use this for my q-tips but I thought oh, that's so cool and this I'm using I'm pulling things all the time I have certain pens that I use a certain pencil that I use um, tools that I use um, and it's right in the center of the back of my table and I can get that out and um, even like I use this tool a lot with my project bags and I was never able to find it because it was slipping down in that black organizer that I just showed you now I have it it's in that little cup and I see it all the time so those were some tips and then a lot of people have been talking about their use of best press um, Lori just shared about it. Vonna shares about it. I have been using this for several years and I always get the unscented. I do not, I try to avoid any, any artificial fragrance because not only am I allergic to it, but I know it's bad for my health. So this one is unscented and I use it. And then I had a smaller plastic spray bottle because it had been my mom's 
and I was always having to refill it. Well, it broke and I thought, oh, enough. So I grabbed one of these out. This was in my office um, because of the oil stuff that I do. And I thought, okay, it even matches. And it's 16 ounces, so I don't have to fill it that often. So that's just part of my simplifying. Like if I didn't want to bother going across the hall to fill it up in the bathroom sink, I just wouldn't use it. That's how silly I get sometimes. Now, the other the other things that I have found as I'm going from my um, cutting ironing surface to my sewing machine, I I will not I will sometimes I I need a pin cushion on my sewing or my quilt table. Then I need to undo those pins and have them there and so and I have two. I've got my mom's my mom made these, so I had my pin cushion, my mom's. So I use the pins from one and then I put them in the other. Well, sometimes both of those are up here. So I have my mom's because I got all her extra stuff. This is great. It's a magnetic one and I have this in a drawer so I don't have to get up and oh, I'm looking over there at the sewing machine. I don't have to get up, get my extra pin thing because usually I'll put them in my mouth and I know that's not a good thing. So now this is just kept in my drawer as a spare so I don't have to get up and down and up and down. I'm trying to avoid frustration for different things. Then these were my neat nesting things. So I've shared about these where this is my Oort container for my spare threads, but it's also right behind my sewing machine. So as I use these um, to make the project pouches, when I'm done, I have this next to my sewing machine and I just put those in there because before they were falling all over the floor. Then I thought, I. Oh, I hate when it does that. Um, I thought I had lost these. These are my Ginger Snips. This is the other thing I wanted to share about organization. If you're organized, you have a place to put it and it's going to stay there. Well, I was looking for something in my beading supplies and actually that's where it was. But for the longest time, all I had was this and I'm glad I didn't throw it away because I thought, I thought that it had fallen into my trash can and that's where I learned the hard, well, I thought was the hard way. You don't put your trash can right below your sewing machine because thing, as it jiggles, things fall into it. I've had many things jiggle and fall off the table. Some people have really neat aprons. Christy at Crosshatch Quilt shared about her little apron that she had for the sewing machine. I don't have that. Um, but one thing that I learned was I was able to purchase these. Um, these were on Amazon. They were just silicone tray things. But the, the good thing is they fit right next to my sewing machine. And I've got actually now two of them. Things don't jiggle off, but I can easily get to things. So that was a little tip that I wanted to share with you. A lot of tips, but I'm cleaning my table off. Now, um... I now have one of these. I used to have to go into my bathroom, get, um, what are these? Uh, they're, they're the roll on things that you usually get pet hair off with. These have been really great, especially as I was doing the paper piecing, as you're removing the paper piece, you get um, bits of thread or bits of paper all over the place. So this has been very handy. And then I was working with pre-cuts, which are like charm packs and jelly rolls, and the edges are pinked. And so um, these work really good at helping to get rid of all that stuff. Um, but now I have this on my cart, which I'm gonna share with you in a minute. This now stays, I have a perfect space for it. It stays in my quilting room now. So what else do we have? Okay, as I'm, I'm wanting every single thing that I can organized. It's, I think it's just a reaction to what I feel is a world out of control. So that's part of what I do with my crazy is I figure out what I can do that I have control over. And this I've seen it in my life. When I feel out of control in a situation, I clean something. I'm turning it in instead of drinking or something that would not be good for me right now. Um, food, um, food is my problem. So instead of eating too much, I'm trying to turn that crazy into something that's healthy. So I even had, I had these random balls of um, pearl cotton because they were for a project, but I couldn't remember what it was. Well, I went into my office and I have a bunch of these bags and then I have a bunch of these craft label one inch stickers. So these are my spares that I will have 
in my in in a little place that I will keep them here so I can label this was for Jake's quilt um, and that way I, I can put them away and I will know what they're for this is for another hand quilting project that I have so now I can put those away but instead of next time having to go in my office and get the bag and get the label if it's right here I will be more likely to do it so Oh, I got all this out, so we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. As I've been organizing and planning, and I had shared this, I was kidding up a bunch of stuff, and I have found some of my favorite tags are actually not ones that I'm making, but ones that I'm buying. These are Park Lane tags from Joann's. I think it's like $2, and they come like this with a little top, so you can put it on your thread ring. Well, I purchased, this is a... 5 8 inch or you'll probably I can't read it um, this is a punch and it just punches out this hole so this is where your thread goes through so I'm enjoying these even better than the ones I'm purchasing because I love craft paper because it's primitive looking um, and I'm I'm enjoying those so that's working out well for me but when I do make tags I have this one and I shared when I had a, a tutorial, not tutorial, on how to make my thread charms, I'd shared about this one. So this is a tag, but this this size is larger and I am finding that they work well. Um, the size works well because you have plenty of room to write on, but if you get the regular craft paper, because I'm not a scrapbooker, I just buy these little small ones. But this is um, something that's available at a lot of the stores, but it's thinner and it doesn't have a backing. So to make it thicker, I actually had to glue two together. So that took a little bit more work, but you know, it's just when I'm sitting drinking my coffee at my bar stool here, <laughs> at my bar stool, um, and it worked. Um, but I found, I had bought this a long time ago for another project and I, this is thicker. And I thought, well, why is this thicker? I went back to Hobby Lobby and they still have this, even though I bought this a couple years ago, they still have this particular one. But I, I was thinking, what makes this different? It's called, it says it's adhesive. Um, I've never figured out, I'm, I'm not going to use it as an adhesive, but it has that thickness that I really like. And that is working well. So I have a whole bunch of these now. This is what I do when I'm drinking my coffee. I just do fun stuff. So I don't have to do a backing. It is thicker. So that was the tip that I had wanted to share with you on another one, but I didn't think I did. So I thought this will just be all my tips. And then again, my little plastic boxes. This is where I got my cabochons for my thread charms in, but it works great to have all those um, stored in there. Then I, for the, if you're doing the quarter inch, um, hole punch. I had bought one at a store and it was a really low quality. So I have found this is the Fiskars one. It is just a better quality one because sometimes I'll think, oh, I'll just take it back and I get lazy and I don't want to bother. And then I just throw it away. So I thought, eh, if that will help anybody, that would be good. Then, um, let's see how I can stay organized. The other purpose for me being organized is I have lost a chart. And so one day I spent hours and I, th I think it, it like when you do a video and you're sharing a lot of things, you just throw it on the floor. Everybody does that. And then we want to take things out of the bag so they, they don't reflect and they don't make the noises. In doing that, I lost the chart for this Christmas tree. One, I went to look at it because I was going to start working on it and all I have is this and this. So I've lost my chart and it's got to be somewhere. And so I thought, well, I know I shared about all my projects when I did that, um, the beginning of January, I did a, I did a, a whole kind of a whip parade. So I went through every single project bag, pulled everything out, looked in there to see where it's probably just one page of the chart. I looked, it, it took hours and that's why I've been putting it off, but it was just, that's, that's where I've been spending my time. And it was, fun. well, the sad thing is I didn't find my chart. 
I will find it and I've got certainly plenty of things to do until I find it. But the other thing that it did was I touched every single cross stitch pattern that I have bought since this last year and it was inspiring and it was beautiful and um, it's, it's, it's my collection. So even if I never stitch anything, it's my collection of beautiful things that give me that hope that I will stitch on these someday. So it was very fun, but that's the other tip that I wanted to share with you about organization. It helps you keep track of what you have or don't have or thought you lost and had somewhere else. Now, as I'm letting the squirrel out of the cage and maybe not wanting to work on a particular project, I just like flipping through either my quilt patterns or my um, cross stitch things. And so when I have a cup of coffee in the morning, I'll just grab something and either be in here or out in the backyard and I'll just go through something and it just gives me joy. And I grabbed this and I realized even if I never make this pattern, um, which is fun, and, and of course I'm going to change it up a little bit because I don't like spiky things. Um, I just looked at this and I thought, oh, I love those colors. So that's my thing. I love these colors. These colors, these old worn things, um, they, they make me happy. So that's where I knew I don't want to do so many, many of the bright things because as much as I love those to look at them, they don't give me that warm and cozy. I love this room because it has old things, wood things, and um, and I've always loved wood. As a woodworker for 25 years, we ha we my husband and I both love wood. So that was that was just a little thing. Now I have this. So this is this is a book. If you can see, I think you can see better. Um, this pillow. Um, I'm not a pillow person, so I realize I usually just throw pillows out of the way. So I just have these now on top of couches so I can look at them. This was just something that I pulled out because I was in the backyard and my husband and I were having coffee and a mockingbird was, was, had a twig in its mouth setting up a nest in our tree in the backyard. That's a blessing and a curse because I love the mockingbirds, but at midnight they do a song and I sleep with the windows open. And then I wake up every night at midnight because he's going to be right outside my window. But he's he's a beautiful little part of our yard. Um, so this is from that book, and this is this is what this was. So it was supposed to be a purse. I turned it into a pillow, and it is from this book. And I've the squirrel that I've done is also from this book. The squirrel that the squirrel out of the cage. I still have a big stack. Um, so the other thing I wanted to share with you was repurposing. This this is the whole part of this video. I had this on the back of the toilet tank and I had it where I had, you know, the spare roll of paper, um, the cleaning supplies, all that kind of stuff was on the back of the toilet. And then I changed it up and I thought, oh, I love this, but it's been sitting in my office. And as I was redoing my room, I thought, oh, that's perfect because I like having things where I can see them. I wanted to get my rulers in a place I could use them. So I have I have my rulers. I get a lot of rulers in here. And I like I like that I didn't go and rebuy something to be able to use that. I'm already tired. I bet you're tired of hearing me, but oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. So as I was figuring out how I could organize, this goes on, I guess I should just show you that because I pulled it out and I want you to see this, but on um, Just Get It Done, um, the Just Get It Done um, sewing organizing videos, sewing room organizing videos, Karen had one about turning a cart into an ironing board stand. And I thought, oh, that would be great. Well, there was nowhere in my room to put it. So I thought, but I like that idea of the cart. And that was her whole thing is it's ironing board plus a cart, but she fit the space that she had. So she said, just figure out what space you have and look and shop for a cart that fits that. Well, in my closet, I, I measured the opening 
of my closet, which has my quilt fabric on each side in drawers. So I was, I just kept having to think, how can I, I how can I get a bunch of stuff on that cart and still get in there? Well, a cart rolls. Until I get the tile done in my sewing room, it doesn't roll as nice because it's loaded down, but I measured that space. I bought the cart. I even put it together by myself. And this is ugh, heavy is what this is. Um, but this is my cart and this is just the top of it. Um, but usually on the top of this, are, this is where I set all my trays so I can just grab those. So I've got trays here and I have plastic boxes that I use for nesting. Those are what I wanted to show you. But organization is huge. These are my quilts in process because I hand quilt. I got a lot of them. Um, I have some of my mom's that are coming undone so I have to redo them. And then, oh, that's why I have this on top. So my mom had made this fun quilt for my son Chad who loves patriotic. And her machine quilting is coming undone. So I'm going to hand quilt it. But I found her scraps. So I have my beggar's fourth um, cross stitch project. But I, it's like I'm not going to start it until I have a project bag. Well, I found those, those scraps of, there I am. I found those scraps of strips. So um, it was just fun that I can make a, a now a project bag out of those strips. I have more stuff below it, but I don't think you're going to be able to see it. And I'll share that on another space. But the shelf below it is where my project bags will, my bigger project bags will be going. And then I have this basket now because I have so many flosses. I have this basket of my flosses. So, um, and then the shelf below it, I've got plastic boxes. And then the shelf below, <laughs> see, this is how heavy it is on the carpet. The shelf below that, I have my notebooks and um, some more organization. Every, every square inch of that is used to the best of my advantage um, because I got a lot of stuff. And that was my thing when I pulled out my wool from my sewing or from my office to try to organize my office. I thought if it doesn't fit in my sewing room, it's going to go in the garage. I don't like going in the garage for stuff because our garage is yucky. And so that's, that was the whole purpose of me getting really organized. And I got on a roll. And so that's what I've really, you know, we're going to do what we enjoy doing. But because I wanted to see what I had, this was just a galvanized tin that I already had. Um, but I don't like, I don't like noises. So when I set that on top of the metal cart, it makes that metal on metal noise. You know, we all have weird things, but that noise is not my favorite thing. But, okay. So, um, we're just going to share this. Even, I was I was going to do this as a short video, and it, it's not that way. But on my last floss tube that I did, I had purchased some things, and I wanted, but I couldn't find the business card. So, the things that I'm going to share are from this company. It's on Etsy five times blessed. And then I realized there's also five little buttons. Is it a separate Etsy shop? I don't know. Um, but on the box and it came so, I, I marked out my address, but it came packaged so cute. Um, it says, yay, happy mail. And I saved this box to show with, show you guys because I love, I think we all love when something comes packaged beautifully. It has that, and it has this stuff um, that that I can use um, in the future. So anyway, now I can share with you what I got. So I purchased three things. I change things up. That's just what I do. Um, so these were perfect as they were for most people. Um, but because of me um, and wanting to do something a little bit different, I, I am really enjoying seeing everybody's strawberries that they're sharing. Either they're buying them or they're making them. I wanted I wanted one. So she had this and it came with this cute um, tape on there. So it looks like measuring tape and it was cute so you can hang it. Well, it wasn't as prim as I wanted it to be. So all I did was I took that off. And 
I have it setting so I do not have a dough bowl yet. Um, I am using what I have. I have a sweet friend who got this for me on one of her trips to another country and it is a wood bowl and I've got stuff in here. So this was from my mom or my friend's neighbor. And um, so this little strawberry sits in there, but look at these. What is that? 13 cents. These are old, um, but they will still, if I need needles, those will be there. In my organizing, I have a lot of my mom's stuff and sometimes it's just too emotional to go through it. But one day I thought, yep, I'm ready. So I have a basket with a bunch of stuff in it. I pulled it out and it's some of her, her things that she used every day. And so um, I just thought that day it was like, okay, I can go through this and I can use it. But her fingers and her hands were much bigger than mine. So her thimbles and things don't work for me, but I still have them. There was a box and it had threads. She may have used them or may have just been decoration, but I love old thread things. So because I was brave and did that one day, I got these. So they sit, um, there's a little table over there and they sit next to a bear that she made. And so I had this sweet little strawberry that I bought from that company. Then I also, they had button, they had button um, paper mache, and these are old buttons. And so I thought, oh my goodness, because I love when I see people with their neat, beautiful displays on Instagram. Ginger Shawl has amazing displays. She is so inspiring to me, and it's like looking at a magazine looking at how she has her displays. And then when you buy the Blackbird Design books, they're just so beautiful. So I thought, oh, and I liked it because it was prim. Now, the only thing that I did, the it was top heavy and the top kept falling off. And I'm sure that's just the nature of paper mache. So I just lined it with some wool um, and I just glued that on. And so it's a little snugger, but it, and I have some buttons in there, um, but it, it, that's just me. I'm sure for normal people that would not have, that would not have been a problem, but I love that. And she had quite a few of those. It was really hard because I'm trying to simplify or that would, I guess, be minimalizing. I had like three of them I wanted and I thought, no, no, you just need one, um, at the moment. So those, those were lovely. Then the other thing was a needle minder. Um, that is an old button. Let's see, one, two, three. I think that's the right way to show it. I don't have my glasses on. It's an old button and a um, lot of special reasons why I chose this, but I'll share that on another one because otherwise it's going to be way, way too long. And then she sent me, um, there was just a cute little thing. So I wanted to leave it in here because it was so cute, um, but I will use that on a finish that I have, probably a, my Valentine finish. So that was a cute thing. Now, the other thing as I was going through that container of my mom's stuff, I found, and I've shared that she has tins, I found this, but on top of that tin, um, this was one of the reasons, oh, I'm dropping a needle. Okay, this was one of the reasons that I, I, I've not been able to use this because it had this note taped on the top. And I, I called my dad right away because I thought I'm gonna take the note off now. But it was a note that my dad, when he was taking care of, he kept my mom home as she declined with Alzheimer's. He kept her home until the last two weeks. And all of us kids were saying, Dad, um, you, you can't do this anymore because it, it was too much for my dad. It, it was, her, her needs were too great, but he wanted to keep her home until she was gone. And um, he's my hero, but he would do, she had these little, the th same things that I do, um, just a different company. I use these as thimble tips. He even wrote a note so my mom would remember what they were for. Um, and that had been taped to the top and I've had that for years. And then finally I thought, it's time. Um, it's time to use this tin for something of my purpose. Um, so that was, that I was brave and I did that. Um, then the other thing that I wanted to share, I'm really enjoying Miss Marple. I don't like regular TV. Um, I like, even though it's a murder mystery, it's not gory. It's not, it, sometimes they're a little dark, but 
I love Miss Marple and I love this Miss Marple as she's the only one that I will watch. And as I watch the opening scene, it always reminds me of you, Allison. Um, I have my friend Allison and she is in England and I love seeing pictures of her garden, her projects. And it always reminds me of Allison um, when I watch this. So that's what I watch while I'm stitching. Then I met with my sister again and um, she gave me something because she said, oh, your stitching friends would love to see this on floss too. Um, it is a very old um, catalog. Very old. I was trying to find a date in here. But this is, you know, it's all those vintage things. But um, look at this. I think it's saying it's 10 cents, 20 cents. I don't have my glasses on. But it's just so neat. Um, just neat old, but this is, this is not a reproduction. This is a really old one. So it was probably my grandmother's because my grandma was a knitter. Um, so I've got that and just a lot of neat things. The reason I have this one out is because I'm doing embroidery stitches. I'm, I took something off. I'm doing embroidery stitches and, um, I will share about all these old books that I have, um, in my quilting video because I don't want it to, this one to be too long. This one I found, I had done this when I was 18. I remember when I bought it, I stitched it the whole trip um, as someone else drove. And um, it's cruel, it's called, it's cruel, it's cruel. No, it's C-R-E-W-E-L, I believe. And um, I thought, oh my gosh, this was, this was something that I did. Uh, you know, why I chose to do that one, I have no idea because I was, I was like an older teen. Um, I'll find out. I'll probably do it on a front of a project bag. Then the other thing about organizing is I am finding so many projects that were in the works. So I'm not taking this out. This is, um, I had a lot of Brenda Gervais from years and years ago. Country Stitches. You can go to Country Stitches online. I have all those pieces cut out and just not done. I did the hard work. So now I have that and I want to get organized. So let's show you the trays. So now I can get these put away. Um, this is another reason why I have not been cross stitching is I worked on this. I took an entire day. I worked on that. That's for the upcoming release of Kim Deal's. Kim Deal has a brand new Simple Whatnots book coming out. Um, I think it came out yesterday or the day before. That's on a tray. And as it was on my quilt table, everything stayed in that tray and it was wonderful. That goes up. Oh, see, even plastic makes a noise. Then the other thing is my other tray that I have. And these are all my project bag pieces or inspiration on something to use. Orphan blocks from my mom and me um, of project bags that I'm going to do all together. So that way, if I want to work on that, I can get that out instead of having it thrown on the floor. The neat thing is they nest inside of each other. So let's get that put out of the way so now I can share this. So these are the last two, three things I'm going to share with you. Um, as I was cleaning and got stuff out of my office, I had, because I've always collected wicker baskets. Now they're way overpriced. Um, but this was one that I had. This is all my wool roving um, which I have not gotten into again, and I will share about that another time. But I was trying to figure out how can I get this in my sewing room? And there was a spot under my quilt table where I stand at this quilt table all the time, and I wasn't going to have my toes hitting into anything. So I found a perfect thing. So this basket goes tucked under um, because my quilt table has like a leg on it. So this tucks under where I stand. And it's narrower than this basket. Again, I had this. It was on top of the refrigerator. This is my quilt basket. And it this comes out a little bit more. But the, the one below it is like my toe guard because it goes in farther. So even though this one comes out more, it doesn't even bother me. Um, but this, I these are my project bags. And this one is my favorite one because I used a whip to put it on there. But this is where I like all these being the same size. So that's why I said that vinyl one was just a little bit too wide for that. Okay. Now, because you know what? I keep wanting to share all these things with you because 
as I am sitting in my room, I keep thinking, oh, I need to share this. This is such a great tip, or I need to share this. So that's what this one is all about. Um, now, I have shared this one before. This is um, another repurposed thing. Oh, there's threads hanging down there. A stool that I turned an old wood box into a stool. But I wanted to share with you, not only is it very handy, because I use it all the time, um, both for when I hand quilt, I sit on my couch, and I use my legs because I don't stitch in a hoop. I use my legs to prop what I'm quilting on. So that stool goes there. Otherwise, I cross my legs. Gives you varicose veins. Not good for your circulation. So I use that. But, um, and then I have it under my quilting table. It fits perfect under my quilting table. And it's great for when I'm sitting at my bar stool. Now, um, how am I going to do this? I'm going to prop this here. The cool thing is, this is the tiny house living. It has space inside. Now, I have figured out that, but I stole some boxes. I can fit three of these boxes in there. Let's put this down. Or I can fit one large box and one small box. So. I really am enjoying using the same size plastic boxes because I can change them depending on what project that I'm working on, yet they can nest. So this goes up on that top tray next to my tray, and this, because this is where I'm working on the pineapple blocks, because they nest, they take a lot less space. So I've got my light strips, my dark strips, and then my other supplies down there. All that fits up on that tray, and if I put it, um, my the tr the cart. I'm sorry, it fits on my cart. The cart is as deep as this is long, so I can fit them right up there. Now I'm going to put it right up there next to the trays, and that's why that's up there. But um, I find these very helpful so that I can have these. And I also have this size in my, my um, quilt UFO unfinished object cupboard. Wow. That's almost everything. One of the most important things is at the end um, that I'm gonna share now that I'm out of breath. Um, I got some a sweet card from Sarah in the mail and it was beautiful. It was just uh, just so uplifting to get something in the mail. And then she sent um, she sent garden seeds, zinnia, and shasta daisies. And um, and I love both of those. So those are very fun. But I wanted to leave that there um, to be able to show you. But just um, just sharing that um, she called it what I do a ministry. And that's where. Whoa, let me catch my breath. Um, and my, my water is all the way, I have to climb over stuff to go to get it. Um, I love sharing my faith in these videos. So now this is what I will call the good stuff at the end where I, I share my faith and how God is meeting me where I am. And I am a woman that has a lot of issues and I'm transparent about them, which good or bad, that's just how I am. And um, I, know, I know a lot of my commenters, my viewers, those, those of you who are watching, comment. And it really helps you that when I share my challenges, it helps you realize you're not alone in those challenges. And so, so I was trying, to, I was thinking, I was like, Lord, what do you want me to share today? And I'm just going to share with you what I've been doing the last two weeks and a conversation that I had with my husband. My mom and I um, are very much alike. Um, our personalities, I even just, just yesterday I was talking to my dad and was saying goodbye and he says, oh, you look like your mom more and more every day. And I know it's the gray hair. Um, but I also look very visually like my mom. And so we are alike personality and looks. And, um, I struggle with anxiety and she struggled with anxiety too. So as I was cleaning out the quilt table that I got from her, um, 
I found a note. She had written notes all over the place for herself, for my sister, my brother, and I, for my dad. Um, my dad was just sharing one Christmas morning. I think it was after my mom passed away. Um, and I think it was that Christmas. She died the beginning of November. And that Christmas, my dad was just really sad and praying. And he went to open up a drawer. And he found a note to him from her when she had her Alzheimer's. And so that was just beautiful. So I would love to be able to do notes for my family too. Um, I, I tend to do notes for myself, but this is one that she had. So fear is one of the, the enemy's deadliest strategies. Fight this fear. So um, I just, sometimes my mom's notes are hard to have around because they make me miss her a lot. And other times they're a joy to have. So I pulled that one out today. But I was telling my husband, I struggle so much with different issues. Yet I'm out working and I'm doing things. But I feel like I have to work so much harder than what I would call normal people. And this is, you can see, this is, this is what I've been struggling with. And I was just like, Lord, why, why do I struggle so much? Why do things throw me? I generally can't watch regular TV because I can't stand the commercials. I know there's ways to get around that. But I don't like the humor that is on TV and I don't like the stuff that is on TV. And I was thinking is that that's always been, even as a child, that kind of stuff bothered me. And uh, I couldn't get to sleep if I had just watched something at all intense. So that's always, that's always the, the way I've been. Because, of course, in my mind, I'm thinking, is this Alzheimer's kicking in? That's just the result. I know my sister struggles with that, too. And a lot of people that their parents have had um, dementia of some kind, you struggle. But it's like, now nah, I think I've always been that way. But then the other thing is, I have a job, I work, um, and I can do it. And I'm good at what I do. But when I'm done, I usually don't listen to the radio right now because my mind is just like I'm, whew, I have to, I've had to work so hard to be normal and to do everything that I'm exhausted. So I've been coming home from work just really mentally exhausted. And that's why I haven't been stitching as much either. So I've just been talking to God. Okay, God, what do you have for me to do? I, I know you've created me for a purpose. And I know... Even though I'm aging, I still have a lot of things that I can do. And so those are just the things. I've just, this is, I just have conversations with God. And then I shared with you last time, this is something, the, the comments that I get are so beautiful and uplifting. And, and I, I do not check my comments every day. That's just, I don't do anything every day. But I go through and I glean. And so I'll catch up and I'll just sit for an hour and go through all these comments. And quite often I cry because they're so beautiful. And um, I have this one. This one is taped on my printer before I go to work. And it's from Carmen. And she said, God already has my life planned out. Keep my eyes on him and not on the problems of the world. And then another one from Lazy Linda. Um, hope in God. Um, oh, hope. I don't have my glasses. God is not done. And Oh, hoping God, God is not done. So these are the things. And so I've been having the conversations. And then as I'm going throughout my day, I have a lot of Bible verses memorized. And I'll just say them over and over to myself. And I'll pray them. And so those are the things that are helping me. It's like, so, so that's what I was telling my husband. Um, if God has a plan for me, he has my life all planned out. And what his plan is, is good. doesn't mean it's easy, but it is good both for me and for others. So instead of me trying to figure everything out, God's got it all figured out. He knows everything. So why don't I then just ask God, what do you have for me in this moment? What do you have for me with this client? What do you have for me in this day? What do you have for me in my family? And not worry about everything that I think I need to do. So I have a friend of mine, and for a while we were doing, every day we would read a chapter of the Bible, and then we would text each other, and we're both late-nighters, so it's like midnight. We'll 
we'll do these, and we would text each other our favorite verse in that chapter. And so if she did it first, then I'd choose another verse, and if if I did it first, then she would choose another verse. And so we're going through Psalms again. And so I I read ahead because we just started it back up again. And and that's why I love having my Bible. And it has so many things that I have outlined and done stars in. And these were the verses that just calm my heart at night. This is Psalm 5, 11 and 12. But let all those who rejoice, let all those Rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. And so that last night, it was just perfect because, you know, the reality of our changing world is, is affecting us in different ways. Well, our family was affected this week, um, lot, there's crime is on the rise and our police force is being reduced. And we live close to the border, which is not secure. And there's, there's things that are happening. Um, my son got his car stolen again. Um, and it's sitting in our driveway right now because he had to have it towed somewhere. But the cost of sin affects us and he's having to figure out on reduced income how to replace this car that is too easy to get stolen and the stuff that they stole from it a simple part that is $1,400 to to replace so he's letting it sit there but it reminds me the cost of sin in the world affects us too how do we how do we keep going through life with our chin up, with our eyes on God, not getting drawn into the sad or the hard things, but seeing them as the things that God has a plan for us in it. He will provide or show us how we can do without and keep moving forward. Those are the, those are the things. That's my, that's my faith journaling for the week. Um, but I can see that car right now. And um, when we realized yesterday the catalytic converter that was stolen is very expensive. And I just thought, oh. and I, I was crying and I was just telling my husband, how do, how do we keep moving through here? And that's what we came up with. Just keep our eyes on the Lord. Keep moving forward. So that's what I wanted to share with you. A lot of tips and tricks. Hopefully next time I will have some cross-stitching done, but this is just life and this is my connection with you and I value so much um, those of you who watch, those of you who stay to the end, those of you who comment and um, just the, the connections that I am making through this beautiful and uplifting and encouraging floss tube world and quilting world and as the world seems to be getting darker and darker this connection and this this community seems brighter and brighter to me. So thank you. God bless you. And as I remind myself to choose joy, nevertheless, may you also. Thank you, guys.